List building in Warhammer 40k has a huge problem, one that's affecting both competitive and casual play and needs to be addressed ASAP. So let's do what we do best whenever we find a problem with miniature wargaming and talk about it in excruciating detail. What's up folks, welcome back to Tactical Tortoise. My name is Trevi and today we're gonna be covering a huge, enormous, and terrifying problem with list building in Warhammer 40k right now. 40k 9th edition's release has been pretty rocky to say the least. Between broken terrain mechanics that had to be entirely rewritten almost immediately upon launch, shockingly poor balance in mission packs, and general burnout from the community thanks to the new release schedule of constant Space Marine models, it's hard to say that the launch has gone smoothly by any stretch of the imagination. On top of that, list building in 40k has basically never been easy, with endless prerequisites and variable war gear costs, different detachment abilities, so in conjunction with an unstable release of this new edition, it's no surprise that it's been broken even further, which it was with the release of the 9th edition Munitorum Field Manual. For those who don't know, the Field Manual was a balance update document released alongside the 9th edition rules designed to update the points value of every model and piece of war gear in the game to the design team's new paradigm of roughly 20% smaller games of 40k. Unfortunately, these points changes were extremely formulaic and did little in the way of actually updating the balance of the game. So generally, the field manual is regarded by the community as a shameless cash grab to let GW sell yet another book to new players while acting as a stopgap for factions who won't be getting a codex release for a long time. What surprised people, however, is that the document also heralded a change to the battlefield role slot of several units in the game. Battlefield roll in 40k is obviously an important metric on a unit's datasheet. It tells you the slot it needs to fill in a detachment and sometimes imposes additional restrictions, such as the case with Space Marine Relic vehicles that we'll be talking about shortly, which have to have another non-relic keyworded unit in the same battlefield role in the same detachment to allow you to take them at all. In some circumstances like this, knowing the battlefield role of a unit is even more important than knowing, say, its exact points cost, since these slots can be highly competitive, especially in an addition that's trying to shrink down the number of detachments making up a list. So it was a pretty big shock to everyone when the Munitorum Field Manual picked up a full dozen data sheets and surreptitiously swapped around their battlefield roles real quiet-like. <laughs> So where did these changes take place? All of the affected data sheets are for Forge World units and swapped most of them from the Elite to Heavy Support Slot or vice versa. The affected units were just moved from their normal Battlefield role section that they would normally be listed in their faction to a brand new one, i.e. they were listed in a section that does not match the role listed on their data sheet. I'll put in a list of the changed data sheets that I found in the book on the screen right now. There might be a couple that I missed, but I, these are the ones that I could see on my first go around. The headliner here are obviously the Space Marine data sheets, where most of their relic units moved from the Elite slot to Heavy Support, and also randomly Siege Dreadnoughts moved from Heavy Support over to Elites. The other data sheets that changed are honestly kind of immaterial. At best, they're fringe playable and rarely can see a competitive table, so they don't matter too much. But in the case of entries like the Landspeeder Javelin and especially Relic Whirlwind Scorpius, the picture is much different, and this is what's causing issues for competitive play. The Scorpius especially has seen a ton of table time all the way through 8th edition due to its status as the Space Marine's premier indirect fire platform. If you're willing to spring the points for its hefty cost and keep it company with a buddy to open up its relic slot, you're rewarded with an incredible multi-damage artillery piece with great AP and the ability to fire twice if it doesn't move, even though it is a little shorter range than the more modern Whirlwind variants. Likewise, many of the other relic options for Space Marines saw some play in 8th edition, with some of the Sicarian variants doing work alongside Ultramarines and Imperial Fists, and Relic Javelins getting a resurgence in 9th edition when their focus on speed and resilience worked well with the new 9th edition mission paradigm. So obviously, the question of the battlefield role for these units is pretty important to the integrity of competitive play, and especially for the factions that want to be taking them. The issue is that the battlefield role slot listed on these data sheets has not specifically been eroded. 
Well, the Munitorum Field Manual is the latest publication to feature these units. It is expressly a points update document, so while the points are a statistic associated with the unit, Games Workshop typically likes to keep them separate from the actual data sheet, listing them in a separate section of the book. So, even though the Munitorum Field Manual lists a new battlefield role for these options, it's unclear whether or not it's actually meant to apply to their data sheets. But that's easy enough. I can hear you already typing in the comments. We'll just wait for the field manual to get a run. At least then, the devs can drop a designer note and give us a good idea about how to play these updated profiles. Except you'd be wrong, because the Mutator field manual has been eroded twice, and this issue has not been addressed at all. So it leaves it up to the community to resolve it on its own. And this is where problems with the cohesiveness of the competitive community crop up. Because... There is not yet an agreement on how these profiles should work. On one hand, many event runners and tournament organizers decree that since the field manual titles itself as a points update document, it has no authority to change the contents of data sheets. You have no power here, Gandalf. The and everything in the book, aside from specifically the point values themselves, should be entirely ignored. Other organizers, myself included, interpret this paradox the opposite way. That, as the field manual is the latest GW publication dealing with these profiles, it is the intention of its authors that their position be moved to a new battlefield role. And here lies the real, raw, beating heart of the problem. Which is that I don't know which side is right. I think both sides of this issue have a fair point, and GW has done absolutely nothing to make their intentions clear in this case. The harm this can do, especially in a competitive context, is pretty apparent. It splits the community, it creates new micro-formats within different metagames, changes the power level of lists and factions depending on where you end up playing, and makes sharing information and gathering statistics even more difficult. Now, honestly, this wouldn't be the worst thing if this was 8th edition, which already had multiple tournament formats between 4 or 5 popular mission packs, divided between geographic areas and different large events and conventions, alongside a plethora of house rules that every game store tended to play a little bit differently. But, after Games Workshop made a concerted and direct push to make their tournament format the only one that was universally played, and ostensibly using a lot of their marketing money to do so, it's pretty embarrassing that their subsequent releases create this kind of situation. So to uncover the answer to this situation, or at least try to unearth GW's intentions, we have to do some creative archaeology. As far as I can see, the issue is pretty binary. Either the change was intentional and GW meant for it to permanently affect the units in question, or at least intended to update them soon, in which case the community would benefit from implementing these updated roles as soon as possible, so as either to play as the designers intended them to play, or at least to make way for upcoming changes that will be coming shortly down the road. The other option is that it wasn't intentional and is instead due entirely to incompetence, in which case it's probably safe to ignore this change. Given that it's GW we're talking about, it's pretty much always safe to assume incompetence. But, these role swaps look a little too widespread and deliberate to be mere typos. Let's analyze the Space Marine changes, for example. With the exception of Siege Dreadnoughts moving to Elites, which makes sense given that Box Dreads have traditionally lived in the Elite slot anyway, and the Siege Dreadnought was a, li a little bit of an outlier sitting in heavy support, almost all of the altered Battlefield roles have moved from Elites to heavy support. This makes a ton of sense from a design and balance perspective. While the elite slot is typically one of the most open, battalion detachments, the most commonly taken, give you a full six of them. The slots that these tanks are moving to are a little bit more cramped. In 8th edition, when the data sheets were printed, the system encouraged players to spread their list into as many detachments as possible to unlock more CP, making the difference between the wide open elite slots and more cramped slots like heavy support relatively minor, since most lists unlocked like six or nine heavy support slots pretty trivially. The only real change in this case between them was which particular throwaway buddy unit hangs out with your relic vehicle to unlock that relic slot so you can take it. In 9th edition, however, the system encourages players to squeeze their list down into a single battalion, with slots like fast attack and heavy support in much higher demand. But the elite slot is still basically wide open as it was in the previous edition since you'll still get those six slots unlocked by a single battalion. Therefore, the easiest way to curb the power level of these vehicles and make their relic tax mechanic a little bit more of an actual cost 
is to move them to one of these two highly contested battlefield roles, which is exactly what GW did. Whereas under the old rules, the inclusion of a Relic Scorpius only required a total of one-third of your elite slots out of a single battalion, since the Relic requirement was probably being fulfilled pretty trivially by a trash unit of servitors or something. Now, the access to this powerful artillery piece competes directly with hyper-pushed powerhouse units like Space Marine Eradicators. This change requires that players make some hard decisions when trying to put these powerful Relic vehicles into their armies, while at the same time making a wider selection of different options available is by spreading them into several detachments across the breadth of the detachment instead of concentrating them all into elites. Now that we're seeing some of the Relic land speeders and other units moving to fast attack. Even from a purely logical standpoint, these changes even make sense. Alongside the Whirlwind Scorpius, most of the data sheets moved in the Space Marine section are the Relic Sakarian Battle Tank variants that are swapped into heavy support. Thinking about this even for just a moment, Sakarians basically do exactly what they say on the tin. They are giant, chonky battle tanks, so their new position in heavy support just makes perfect sense. The same goes for the Whirlwind Scorpius, which is a giant missile artillery piece and is right at home in heavy support, and even a, the slight change I mentioned earlier to the diminutive little Siege Dreadnought moving over to Elites alongside almost all of its other old school box Dreadnought cousins also makes total sense. In my opinion, the widespread and logical nature of these changes indicates to me that they aren't just due to some random typo or misprint from some temp somewhere, and as such, should not be ignored out of hand. So let's theorize a little bit, what actually happened here? I imagine the problem was with Forge World's new datasheet supplement that they're releasing later this year to bring all of their unit profiles up to date with the new edition. This book was teased as far back as January of this year with the prevailing rumor that it would be trotted out alongside the 9th edition release. I'd hazard to guess that between the rocky launch of 9th edition with Indominus box shortages and the cascading effects of global quarantine delayed the release of the book, which I bet was originally scheduled to come out alongside the field manual. So some of the upcoming rules changes in the Forge World profiles were added to the field manual so that the two books could work together synergistically, but the Forge World publication was then delayed after the field manual was sent to print and left those data sheets in question in the lurch sitting in a different battlefield role than their 8th edition data sheet printed. For the reasons I've laid out in this video, I think it makes sense to move these units to their new battlefield role slots for competitive play. Well, not everyone agrees with that position, and as I mentioned before, I don't think that making the opposite ruling is really wrong. The confusion and inconsistency it creates in the meta does cause real damage. Players I've spoken to are being ejected from paid events for submitting lists that, while they were legal in one event, were totally illegal in the next one they played in. For events run on the Tactical Tortoise Discord, link in the description, come join us, we're having a great time over there. We've been using the updated rules, and because of the confusion and inconsistent rules between TOs, nobody's being disqualified for our events for uploading erroneous lists in this case. But correcting these errors after the fact leads to a lot of awkward situations and requires a ton of additional manual inspection that eats up a bunch of time. At the end of the day, the fault for this error and the confusion it creates falls squarely on Games Workshop. In light of their recent efforts to push out third-party mission packs and monopolize the competitive community, killing off almost all other tournament formats in the process, the fact that they can't maintain a consistency within their own publications is frankly shameful. Not only that, but the salt in the wound is that the issue remains unaddressed months after the field manual's release, which is unacceptable. Honestly, a single sentence on Twitter or a clarification in one of the several erratas already made to the field manual would have cleared up this issue instantaneously, but the Games Workshop team can't even be bothered to do that much. It's a ridiculous situation, not something that's particularly new for Games Workshop, but given their attempts to win back the competitive community to their side with their 9th edition release, it's not a great start. So that's the whole story. I'm curious to know where you folks fall on this issue. Let's have a little convo down in the comments about what you think. Should the original data sheets be honored or do these new rules imply that GW meant to change them?
So thanks for watching everybody. As always, I want to give a big shout out to my patrons who you are seeing listed on the screen in all their glory right now. If you want to join the patrons, you can do so at patreon.com slash tactical tortoise. You get all sorts of cool benefits. All the patrons got an exclusive, a special, super cool version of this video. Uh, it's ad free and has some additional content in there as well. So that's pretty cool. If you're interested in tournament play on our Discord server, you also get early access to all of the T5S2 tournament pods that we run. And you're going to be getting a couple additional benefits coming down the pipeline later this month. So again, big thanks to my patrons and big thanks to everybody who watched to this point in the video. I really appreciate it. Remember to keep it classy, folks, and have happy wargaming.